Hey everybody, welcome back into Home Fix. My name is Loretta. This is a home style and lifestyle channel. Today, I am continuing on in the yard series. All right, so today we'll be featuring this beautiful Japanese maple. It's a lace leaf Japanese maple, dwarf in size. I'm gonna get you all the details and specs on that as I go along. But today I will be pruning it and preparing it for the season. So I'm gonna share a couple tricks and tips that I'm going to be using to help me to do that and make it easier. And I wanna share that with you so that you can do the same. If you're interested, make sure you hit that subscribe button, comment and like, and I'm gonna jump right into it. All right, y'all, first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and get started with laying down this tarp. Now, this particular Japanese maple tree is about 15 plus years old. It stands about four feet, two or three inches tall. It's gorgeous. It causes me no trouble at all. It's easy to take care of and maintain. I don't have to baby it. And it pretty much has this gorgeous burgundy color year round. Um, it's, the color starts to fade um, toward the latter part of fall going into winter, but for the most part, it's gorgeous like this. It just needs to be maintained as far as the shaping. So that's what I'm gonna take care of today. And I'm gonna water it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these down at the base all the way around. And the purpose of that is to catch the falling leaves. So as I start to prune and you know, this shakes, leaves will fall. <laughs> and so I'll gather them up in this tarp like this and then take it over to the recycle uh, bin and just drop it on in there let them fall on in there and that way I don't have to scrape them up and just cause extra trouble and work for me so I'm gonna go ahead and get started laying this right now I gathered a few rocks from the yard and I'm just gonna lay these down randomly to hold down that tarp so it doesn't move around on me. <laughs> I do not have enough tarp down to my satisfaction. So I went and grabbed my painter's tarp. If you have that, use that. Use whatever you have, an old sheet, whatever. There are a couple of shears that I like to use. See how old these are, y'all? I've been using these so long, but they work, so I'm using them. And I normally start with this tiny one here and then I move on, I go back and forth. So we'll see how it goes. While pruning this tree, I like to work in sections. So where I am currently would be considered section one. To my left would be considered section two. Directly across from where I am currently would be section three. And to my right is section four. As I go along, I am avoiding cutting thicker branches um, or thinning it out too much. I don't want to thin it out too much so that the sun scalds the branches underneath. So I'm trying to be careful not to do that and create bald spots. Um, but it's very difficult with this particular tree because of how the branches kind of intersect and cross each other and all of that. You have to be very careful when you are cutting. When is the best time to prune a Japanese maple? Well, per the information on the internet, it is in the summertime and winter. Now, this is not summer nor winter. <laughs> it's the end of spring. So, um... In the spring or earlier part of spring, it's still growing and getting its foliage all thick and nice and fluffy, which is what you saw earlier on before I began. It was a hairy, fluffy situation. So um, I don't really care for that full of a look. So that's why I'm doing this today. We are closer to the summer time frame. So I feel like it's a safe time to take care of this. And normally when I do it at this time, it works out just fine. So I'm assuming this time will be just as great. Let's 
so I want to show something to you. Um, when I am pruning, I want to make sure to try, <laughs> keyword try, not to cut, cut bald spots in it. See that? Try not to cut bald spots in it. But the thing is with this tree, there's so many spiny branches, it's hard not to do that sometimes. So um, the other thing I wanted to share with you is the skirt. See this? This is what I refer to as the skirt, the lower portion of the tree that hangs down. So that needs to be evened out. And basically I just take and cut straight across, all the way across. And these are hard to, <laughs> harder to get because they're more leafy down here versus branches if that makes sense. So um, trying to get a straight line is hard to do, but I just keep going and going back in until I'm happy with it, okay? So, so far that looks okay, but I'm sure that I will straighten it out a little bit further even still. Underneath here, you will see some hanging branches, see that? So I'll go in and probably get on my hands and knees if I can't see it good enough to cut where I can get that loose. And you see what I, how much I have so far with just, this is the first quadrant um, of pruning. Here is a closer look of the skirt area that I'm referring to. See how low this hangs? Over here has already been done. This is quadrant one, done. See the difference up here versus all of this down here going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this section as well and clean up the skirt and continue on. So let's talk a little bit more about this particular Japanese maple that I have here. It is a Crimson Queen Japanese maple, also known as Acer Palmatum. It is a superb low branching dwarf tree with a delicate weeping effect. And I'm going to show you close up what that leaf looks like. It has like a cut effect to it. It's a cut leaf. I'll show you that. It's a deciduous tree that holds its beautiful crimson color throughout summer. And I can attest to that. And it will drop its leaves toward the end of fall. But for me, um, it's like at the end of fall going into winter when it finally drops its leaves. It has a delicate and lacy leaf foliage and it turns really bright red. Um, as you have seen here, there's some really pr um, pretty purples in there, some burgundies. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous tree, you guys. What a great tree to have inherited with a house. This is such easy upkeep. I do this to it twice a year. This first time here in the earlier part of the year, it's busier. It's more work to it. But that second one toward the wintertime, super light, super light dusting. Now underneath the tree, it gets really thick under here. So I'd like to take like a layer, see that? And cut. And then I try to get the hanging pieces under here too, the hanging leaves. Try to clean those up as well, as much as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want them hanging all low either. So let's get that skirt. Looking good, isn't she? Hey, if you like what you see so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button, comment, and like. Okay, the tree is all done, but before I show you that, let's take a look at all of the fallout. Y'all see this? Now imagine having to pick this up by hand in the mulch not fun so even though there's some fallout outside of the tarp you see that you'll see some outside of the edge of the tarp that's okay because that's a far cry better than what it would have been had i not had these tarps down so just a nice tip to keep in mind okay i'm doing some cleanup here so this tarp situation makes it very easy for me just to gather everything together and take it to the compost container and I'm done. Now in the meantime let me share a couple more fun cool facts about this awesome Japanese dwarf tree. This crimson queen tree is the single most popular red Japanese maple tree sold today. So I believe it. <laughs> it is very dense. You saw how fluffy and full this thing gets and it is like that you know, for the better part of the, the year. Um, and that's a beautiful look. I really enjoy that look most of the time, but in the summer, I like it more streamlined and cleaner look. 
to go with the aesthetics of the look of the house and, and all that's going on in the yard at that time. It's beloved by artists, historians, and gardeners around the world. And its history dates back to the seventh century. Here it is y'all. Here is the completed pruned and trimmed up, spruced up for the season, lace leaf Japanese maple. I love this tree because the maintenance is small, but the impact is great and it looks beautiful year round. I'm bringing you into the trunk space and the rooting area, making sure to show you how I've pulled back that mesh and mulch from the root system. You don't wanna cover that or smother that at all so that it can have the best opportunity to thrive and grow. So make sure you leave that free, taking you all the way around and you'll notice the umbrella mushroom type shape on the tree. That is indicative to the dwarf size of these Japanese maples. So it's one of the identifying factors on those. I love that shape. I'll pan all the way out. See that? I'm not showing you the whole yard because I'm going to do that in another video. But if you check out the uh, video over here to my left, you'll see that I have done some container planting, potting, of some florals so make sure that you check those videos out if you have not because that will be included in the continuation of the yard series of hum fix okay so make sure you do that that's it y'all i will be back this friday with the next installment of the yard edition of home fix so make sure you come back for that there are some clips here that i'm showing of things that i am working on in the yard so i want to make sure that you check out that in its totality, and I'll see you right back here for your next home fix.